Hello, and welcome to this presentation called Decoding Beyonce's Becky, or understanding where the name Becky comes from. Let's get started. In this presentation, pop culture meets classic black literature. That's right. I am Ashan R. Hampton. Here's what you need to know. Beyonce released a new album titled Lemonade on Saturday, April 23rd, during a one-hour visual album presentation on HBO. The album title refers to the classic phrase or the platitude, when life hands you lemons, make lemonade. Or some might say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, but it's all the same thing. Many fans and critics who listen to the album speculate that Beyonce's provocative emotional lyrics confirm rumors of her husband Jay-Z's infidelity. Beyonce's hardcore fans called the Bayhive or the Beehive have accused two women of being the adulterous Becky that Beyonce refers to in her music. Here are the alleged mistresses, Rachel Roy, fashion designer, and Rita Ora, a singer. Both posted classless visual responses on social media. Rachel Roy made a reference to the song that Beyonce spoke of, and Rita Ora posted a picture of herself in a bra with lemons on it. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good look, ladies. The song is called Sorry. And here's the lyric that is driving everybody nuts. He better call Becky with the good hair. So people are speculating that she sang Jay-Z or the man in the song has cheated with a white lady. Becky refers to a white woman. But why? Oh, here's where it gets really good. In 1923, Gene Toomer wrote a book called Cain. Yes, he was considered a Negro. Yes, he was also part of the Harlem Renaissance literary movement. In the titular short story, Becky, meaning Becky is the title of the short story and Becky is the main character, Becky is a disgraced white woman with two Negro sons who lives in isolation between two communities separated physically by railroad tracks and ideologically by race, the blacks and the whites. Therefore, when white women enter interracial relationships with black men, they are referred to as Becky. So in the story, the black community didn't particularly want her because she was seen as uh, someone who needed to be stonewalled. She would infiltrate their community. And the white people didn't want her because she was seen as a traitor to their race. So literally she was allowed to live on like a small island piece of land between the railroad tracks that separated the two communities. It's a really excellent book full of short stories about life, love, race in the South in particular. And you really, really should read it. It might not be taught in schools or even in colleges and universities a lot anymore, but I had the privilege of teaching it whenever I taught black literature or African American literature. And I definitely recommend that you read it if you have not already. So here's something for you to consider for a class writing assignment or just to consider when you read the book. Read Jean Toomer's Becky from the book Kane. That's number one. How does Becky's treatment relate to the social media bashing of the alleged mistresses? How does race inform or fuel the emotional response to Beyonce's insinuations of adultery? Why was Sir mix -a -Lot's use of Becky and Baby Got Back not as incendiary or as controversial as Beyonce's usage? Since I made this presentation, Iggy Azalea has come out saying, don't ever call me a Becky. And um, other women have come out and called Beyonce anti-feminist and all sorts of things. So it gets really interesting when you talk about feminism, black feminism and anti-feminism. So if you are a college or university student, this would be a good story or good research for you to follow. So here's a little bit about me. That's right. I've been an English instructor for many, many years. I'm also a published author. Yes, I also was on radio, but you can find me on my website, www.easyedits.net or urbangrammar.online. 
Thank you so much. And if you enjoyed this presentation, go ahead and share it. Happy learning.